Hi everyone, I'm Nathan from theebookreader.com. For this video, I'm going to be doing a tips and tricks uh, tutorial for the Galaxy Tab E Lite. Uh, yesterday, I just posted a video and this list of tips for the Galaxy Tab A, and like 90% of these uh, apply to the Tab E Lite as well. So I'm not going to go ahead and redo that again. I'm just going to go ahead and put together this uh, video specifically for the Tab E Lite. So uh, for starters, I'm using this uh, Moby Zen. Uh, for Samsung app to record the screen um, and then I'm going to go ahead and record the audio separately because I've noticed these uh, screen capture apps often have like popping noises and stuff in the audio so I'm going to go ahead and record the audio separately but I'm using that for screen capture uh, and it's not HD because the screen isn't HD so uh, but I still think it looks better than like the reflections with the camera and all so let's just go ahead and use this screen capture app and let's start with some basic stuff here so all right, so like I said, this is a lot like the Galaxy Tab A, but the software is older, so we got some different uh, options here. Uh, things work a little bit differently. Like, uh, so if you hold down on the home screens, or if you hold your recent apps button, it'll bring up your options to uh, add stuff to the home screen. You can change your wallpapers in here. So if you wanted to use like wallpaper, uh, like from your gallery, you can use uh, images you've taken uh, with the camera. You can use custom images. You can set. Uh, different wallpapers you can download some like uh, like moving wallpapers the live wallpapers from the Google Play Store and whatnot uh, so you can add more sections to your home screens by hitting the plus sign uh, we can add widgets to our home screen just by going into the widget list there's a little search and icon up there as well so you just take something and you can drag it onto your home screen and some of these apps or these widgets have the option to resize so you can make it however big you want and then to just get rid of anything you just have to hold down and go to the remove option uh, and if you wanted to like uninstall an app it doesn't have it up there like if you wanted to uninstall uh, it doesn't give you the uninstall option from the home screen but if you come into your app drawer right here and then if you wanted to go and uninstall something then it'll bring the uninstall option up there and you can also go to app info if you wanted to go to the application settings menu and that way you can quickly move stuff to the SD card or clear your cache uh, uninstall the apps as well from there so uh, that's sort of a shortcut to get to that it's one of the things I uh, like about this operating system the uh, newer one doesn't have that option you always have to like go into the settings menu so when we have our app drawer visible here we have some different settings if you hit the little menu icon up here so you can actually edit the order of these if you want to customize them uh, if you want uh, to have your like favorite apps at the top level or whatnot you can do that so you can have them sorted um, by custom or alphabetical order in order to change them you have to go to custom first then you can go ahead and move them around however you want so there's a cool thing here too you can hide apps so like if you don't like some of these system apps like I never use um, you know like Google Plus or anything like that so you can just hide those if you don't want it to show up or the newsstand and then it won't show up on here at all and then you have to actually go up here to show hidden apps to get those ones to show so if for the stuff you don't like that's on the pre-installed stuff you can't get rid of that's a good way to hide it so you don't have to see it all the time get your list just for your downloaded apps so you got some different options up there that you don't usually have on your Android settings menu so you can create folders. You just uh, hold down on the app, hit the create folder icon up there. You can enter your folder name. Okay, so down here on the left corner, you can access your files. Uh, they have this uh, file manager right here, so you can get uh, move your files around if you wanted to like move something to the SD card or something. All you have to do is long press on this. Uh, and then you can select the files you want to move and then we have these different options up here so you can have the move option and then there's the uh, copy option and then there's obviously there's the uh, trash option right there as well uh, we also have the sharing so if you wanted to share it directly from here you can do that as well okay so if you swipe down from the top of the screen you get the quick settings menu and then you can actually scroll through here for some different options and then if you hit this button right there you can uh, get the access to the more of these and if we hit the edit button it takes you to the settings menu and you can actually uh, customize the layout if you wanted to have like uh, airplane mode in front you can do that
change things around to the order you want. Okay, so let's go over some of this other stuff while we're in the settings menu. You got your data usage uh, menu right here. It shows what apps are using them, how much data. If you have like a capped uh, internet, you can keep track of your data usage right here. So over here on the Wi-Fi tab, uh, it's not something that's uh, widely publicized, but if you come into the advanced setting menu here, you can turn off uh, Wi-Fi when you're not using the tablet so that it uses less battery power that way, or you can only have, have it so that Wi-Fi is on when the tablet's plugged in. Uh, so you have those different options, and that really does help uh, save battery power because it's not using Wi-Fi when it's turned off. You also have Wi-Fi Direct if you just want to share, uh, connect with uh, nearby devices. You don't have to uh, actually use a network. You can just connect to your devices directly. Got the printing option down here. You can add printers. It'll download this app from the Play Store. Various print apps for your devices. Sound menu, you can change your notifications. So here in the display section, we have this daydream thing uh, where like, it'll show the screensaver when your device is plugged in. You can choose from different ones. It depends on what apps you have installed. So you can also customize the lock screen. Uh, I can't show it because then the video will stop. But uh, you can have these apps located uh, on your home or on the lock screen. You can turn them on and off right here. You can add different apps. Uh, you can also opt to show different owner information. So if you wanted to have like your name or phone number on the lock screen, you can also set different security options for the lock screen uh, and same change the different effect. So in the battery section, it tells you what apps are using the most power, how much CPU power they're using. Okay, so if you hold the home button, it'll open up the Google Now application, and then you can also hold the back button, and that will bring up your list of uh, the apps that you can use in multi-window view. You can also just go uh, swipe from the left of the screen to open that window. Uh, as long as it's turned on up here, you have to have uh, the uh, multi-window turned on. And uh, if that's not turned on, obviously it's not going to show. So if you're having problems getting it to show up, that's why. Uh, you can have your different apps open in here at the same time. So these are the ones that support the dual window mode. And then you can also swap and then go full screen with that middle one. You can also change the size of the window. So if you just want to have a little bit of note, uh, note window open right here, you can have like your web browser open right here. So it's a pretty cool feature that you don't get with most Android tablets. Also, if you hold the recent apps button, it, you can, it'll uh, open menu options on screen. And if you just tap it, obviously you get your recent apps list right here. And then you can um, close specific apps just by swiping them. So there are a couple of different keyboard options. If you hold this little icon down here in the corner, you can use the voice typing option, um, and then you can switch over to the floating keyboard. It doesn't have the text writing options like the tab A does. You can also just tap the voice icon up here to use the voice search. So one cool thing in the display options here is you can go ahead and change the fonts on your device. We got a couple of different preloaded fonts on here and you can also uh, purchase more from the Samsung store. See, we get all the different fonts. It'll be different in the menus and everywhere. So that's one different thing about Samsung's tablets is you can change the font style in the system. Like I said, you can also download additional ones. Samsung has a whole bunch of them here. You can also change the size of the font. So if you have uh, vision problems, you can always increase the font size. 
of the menus and everything. So generally speaking, with most text-based apps, you can hold down on something and copy and paste to different apps. You can move the arrows around to copy bigger selections. And you can also just directly search the web. So that works well for searching the web. If you want to search a term, just highlight it and search the web. You can also share it, obviously. Various apps. Um, another cool thing with the web browser is if you wanted to save documents offline, you just hit the print button and then you can save it as a PDF file. Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video right here. Check out the ebookreader.com for some additional info. Uh, I have this tips and tricks guide for the tab A. Like I said, most of it applies for the tab E Lite as well. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up this video. You guys have a good day. Thank you for watching.